there is glucose in blood and thus when blood is filtered at the glomerulus there is glucose in the filtrate the pct should be able to reabsorb all of this glucose so therefore there should be no glucose excreted in the urine there may be positive tests for glucose in urine if an individual has a genetic defect where they do not pump glucose into the cells of the PCT. But more commonly in diabetes mellitus, there is such a high level of glucose in the blood that there is a high level in the filtrate, too high for the reabsorption mechanisms to get all of the glucose, given that there is a reabsorption maximum. They can only pump so much glucose per hour. And so therefore, glucose in the urine is often a sign of diabetes mellitus. In the post-absorptive state, the liver produces fatty acid breakdown products known as ketone bodies. These are normal in the post-absorptive state, but they are elevated during fasting, starvation, and anorexia, and can also be present in individuals with diabetes mellitus. In diabetes, even though an individual has eaten a meal and blood glucose levels are adequate, the lack of insulin prevents cells from recognizing this, and so the liver responds as if an individual is starving in the post-absorptive state, even though a meal may just have been eaten. So diabetes mellitus can be diagnosed because both glucose and ketone bodies can be present in urine at the same time. Even though each suggests opposite conditions, glucose uh, suggesting uh, a meal and the absorptive state, while ketone bodies uh, suggesting fasting and the post-absorptive state.